We're going to look at doing some of them as kind of like problem solving type questions now. This one here says that the graph below shows y equals f of x. And in fact, we could probably come up with the equation, but we don't need to come up with the equation. It looks like a cubic to me, and I can see the roots are minus 1, 2, and 4. Given that y equals f of x plus a passes through the origin, state the possible values of a. So I want this red graph to move in such a way that it passes through the origin. Could you just describe to me as translations? What are the possible translations of this graph that would make it move into the origin? So the translation could be 1, 0. It could move. If it moves 1 to the right, then that would go in there. Another way it could move would be minus 2, 0. Or it could be minus 4, 0. Because if any of those things happened, it would move four spaces to the left, and that point would be going through the origin. If it was minus 2, 0, that would move two spaces to the left, and it would be going through the origin. If it moved one space to the right, then it would be going through the origin. So we now just need to think to ourselves, what is the value of a that produces a translation of 1, 0? Minus 1. The value of a that produces a translation of minus 2, 0 is 2. And the value of a that produces this translation is 4. So there are three values of a that would allow it to pass through the origin. And you just need to be careful that if you want it to move one to the right, it's actually kind of the opposite of what you'd expect. And the value of a will be the negative version. OK? And they love these questions. They love giving you a graph and being like, someone did this to the graph, and it's now passing through this point. What is the value of the translation? And then you need to think carefully about the relationships between these things that we've got here. OK? You could actually think what would happen. If I just take an example of this one, if we were actually going to apply this translation of moving it one to the right, instead of it passing through here, it would pass through here. Instead of it passing through at 2, it would pass through at Pardon? It would pass through at 3. And instead of it passing through at 4, it would pass through at 5. So the graph would look like this. That's what it would look like with a translation of f of x minus 1. This is f of x minus 1. It's shifted one space to the right because of this negative 1 that we have here. OK? So we're going to just do one more example. This one says sketch x brackets x plus 2. And on the same axis, sketch y equals x minus a, x minus a plus 2, where a is greater than 2. Well, let's just do the first half of the question. First of all, let's sketch this graph that we've got. This is a quadratic that crosses at 0 and minus 2. So it's going to cross at 0 and minus 2. Like this. How do you notice this graph being related to this equation? How do those two equations look similar? Okay, they've got plus two. So what's the what's the, what's changed between them? They've both got minus a. So if we called this first one, if we let f of x equal x x plus two, what do we think x minus a x minus a plus two is the same as? f of what? Minus a. x minus a. f of x minus a. Look here. Every time there's an x, every time there's an x minus a, it's the same thing. We've replaced x minus a every time there was an x, which means that we're trying to do a translation of what's the translation going to be? plus a, 0. And it tells me something about a. So it means it's going to be moving more than two spaces to the right. Because it says that a is bigger than 2. OK, so because a is bigger than 2, it is going to be moving more than two spaces to the right. Well, if it's moving more than two spaces to the right, we just need to decide where it's going to go. Well, 
it's going to go past the origin, isn't it? Because if we're going more than two spaces, this one is going to go all the way past it. And this zero is also going to be going in this direction. So we don't know exactly what it's going to look like, but we do know. I don't know where it's going to cross the axis or anything like that. Terribly drawn. We do know that the roots will be on the positive side of the x-axis. And we're going to try and show what those roots would be. What do you think this root here would be? Minus, this is minus 2, and it's moved across A. So what would the, the new thing? It wouldn't be A. Oh, wait, no. It wouldn't be, what do you say? It would be A minus 2, or minus 2 plus A. Or you could say that is just A minus 2, because it's minus 2, and we've added on A to it. What would this, um, this would just be A, because it was at 0, and we've moved it A to the right. So the x coordinate has changed by adding on A to this one. We've added on A and we've added on a to this one to get the new coordinates for the x bit that we've got there. So it has moved a positions to the right, a units to the right. The x coordinates have increased by a, by adding on a, and by adding on a here. Why did they tell us that a was greater than 2? Because then we knew it was going to be on the positive branch of the x-axis. If they didn't tell us that, it could have just shifted a tiny amount but we wanted to know that it was going to shift all the way to the positive side. So we've got 15 minutes. We're going to do some questions from exercise 4E, and we're going to do those on the whiteboards, okay? 4E, yep. <laughs>